When Dream needed a server that could store unlimited gameplay footage with a matching budget, he knew there was only one place to go. Yo. And we're gonna be building it in true Dream fashion. That's right, we're gonna be speed running the creation of a 1.2 petabyte hard drive storage server with a 200 terabyte all NVMe SSD server. All we need is a little bit of help. All right, I think we're going for a world record here, guys. Kyoxia sponsored the SSD, so that's taken care of. 45 drives practically built the server for us, and you guys are all here to witness it. Starting with the big face reveal. You ready? Cha! Okay, it's more of a face plate. But look, it's a really cool one. It has Dream on it. Let's go, Jakey. Oh, Jesus. Got All right. a server to build here, boys. Oh, this is a lot of drives to shuck. Because the server's for Dream, some of the hardware did end up getting sent to us, but the hard drives were not one of those things, meaning that, yes, my friends, Dream actually did shell out for 60, the full 60, 20 terabyte hard drives. That's gonna be a total of 1.2 petabytes of raw storage, which should work out to somewhere in the neighborhood of one petabyte of usable storage when we're done here. I think we're gonna play this one a little bit safer. I'll put some hot spares, so it might be more like 900. But... Okay, sure, that's fair enough. I don't wanna get a tech support call realistically yeah. from like wherever the crap dream is from. <laughs> the server hardware itself was provided by 45 drives, and this is their turbo tier server. It's got a 26 core Xeon Gold, 512 gigs of DDR4 memory, which we'll be using as a ZFS read cache. We've got four LSI HBAs, which are allowing us to hook up all of these freaking drives. And we actually got them to send a dual port 25 gigabit per second network card, which, um, sorry, 45 drives. We're actually gonna steal from this server and put in the SSD server. And there is a reason for this. Oh! The fancy switch. Hey, I need more drives, Jake. We Hold got on, shush. World record. The fancy switch that Ubiquity sent happens to have two 25 gig ports. So I'm thinking we put them together, aggregate 50 gig to the storage server. Wow. It's probably excessive, but we're gonna do it anyways. Honestly though, outside of our own server room, he is getting the finest storage setup out of probably anyone else on YouTube or Twitch. By the way, Jake, can I just shout you out? for putting these in exactly the correct orientation for me to just Am I? slot them right in. Are you being oh, sarcastic? Are you not trying to? No, 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 I was actually. No, it's like the most ergonomic thing ever. I just grab them and put them in. Yeah, I'll be sure to do it the other way now. Oh, you piece of crap. Why did I say anything? I was not trying at all. It's just happened to be how they were getting pulled out. That's it. Are we done? 1.2 petabytes. You know, it's not that fun when it's this easy. What? I mean, it's, pr I'm, no, I'm still into it. <laughs> we, we haven't found out if it works yet, so. We're replacing this dual 25 gigabit NIC with this dual 10 gigabit NIC. And the reason we're doing that is that, I mean, they're hard drives. Realistically, if we manage to get, you know, what? 20 gigabit trunk, so two gigabytes a second out of it, that'll be fine. I mean, it'll just do, fine. it'll do a lot more than that, but you're just using this for archives, so. Yes. Well, yes and no. I think it's possible that they could end up editing partially off of it if they were working on oh, a project. It'll have plenty for that. Called back from, you know, a previous video or something along those lines. Come on, Jake. What? What was the ergonomic rationale behind putting this server here? I'm not saying you're wrong, I'm just saying I don't see how you're right. Are you complaining because you're short? No. I'm complaining because tall people don't consider my short person needs. <laughs> That's what I'm complaining about. Right, right, right. Very important distinction. Woo! Unlike the petabyte of hard drive based storage, this one actually is gonna have a ton of room for expansion and that is thanks to high density drives <laughs> like the CM6 from Kyoxia. These puppies are available in up to what? 15.3 terabytes brother, of you, pop? This is a 30 terabyte SSD. What, shut up! It's not, not only is it a 30 terabyte SSD, it's a 30 terabyte TLC SSD. It's not even QLC? No. <laughs> these are crazy. Kyoxia just sent these for Dream? Where's mine? Well, they sent 15 for Dream and I was like, yeah, we'll just give them like seven. Oh, really? Yeah. It's not like you paid for them. Yeah. 
That still means he's gonna end up with 120 terabytes of usable space with two parity drives and a hot spare. <laughs> wrap your brain around it, right? This is the state of the art. I mean, I think they're looking at what, 22 to 26 in the next year? And but... those aren't even conventional, those are shingled. Exactly. This has 50% more capacity than this in a fraction of the size. Mind you, it's probably quite literally 20 times the cost. Not to mention, this is PCIe Gen 4. Mm -hmm. These will do almost seven gigabytes a second read on a single drive. <sighs> and that's why we're keeping some. Yes, you should. Okay, so we're gonna do a four node, actually. Wait, what? It... Oh my, oh my God, oh my God. How do you do that? You just literally, holy Oh my God, oh my it, God, oh my God. Who put it there? God. Did I put it there? Dude, are you <laughs> kidding me? Dude, <laughs> what the actual <laughs> is wrong with you? Oh my God, oh, oh, I want to throw up. I really, oh. <laughs> Do you think it still works? No! Oh. Did you hear the <laughs> noise it made? Well, I, it's a pretty, <laughs> It's a pretty bouncy floor. Oh, I, okay, the video's done. I'm leaving. Goodbye. It might still work. <laughs> we, okay, lunch says it still works. I'd say just swap it out with one of the things guys. <laughs> you know, it might actually still work. Here's the thing. I've actually talked to Seagate engineers about the kind of drop testing that they do on these things. There's a solid chance that thing still works. What happened? What? Nothing. You talking no, no, I was just saying that uh, you're a fine young man and I'm really proud of the way you've turned out. I'm not proud of the way you've turned out. This is pretty gorgeous. This is the new version of the one we have, right? Yeah. That's specifically designed for Epic Milan. Milan. So that's a 32 core 7543P, so single, single processor. It boosts to 3.8 gigahertz, I think. So not what? quite as good as the 75 F3. Yeah, but that's pretty freaking incredible. This thing is gonna rip. Oh, are you putting the RAM in? Are you gonna talk about the RAM at all? I'm just gonna put it in. Really? For speed running. Okay, well, it's gonna be 512 gigs of RAM. Nope. What? 128. 128, that's it? They're eight gig dims. Oh. These are from the $1 million PC that we didn't use. Right, Micron sent us literally like flat. 96. Flat of these eight gig ECC 3200 modules. They're fast. Yeah, they're and exactly what you want, just not the capacity that you want. But for this, for you. it's perfect because we're not using RAM caching since they're NVMe drives. Oh, don't need that right. for ZFS, but he's gonna get 128 gigs anyway. So we just want a nice, fast CPU, which for Epic, high speed memory is really important. And then we're basically not gonna hit this at all. Then. Yeah, I mean, stuff will go through it, but. That's it. That's pretty much it. 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59. That's it. Shut up, it does not. There's only 59, see? Yeah, because it starts at zero. Oh, hold on, there might be 60 actually, hold on. It starts at zero, doesn't it? It might start at zero. Bet it does. You might be okay. Bet it does, are you screen recording? There's the moment, yeah! I'm not screen recording, but it does start at zero. There is 60. That doesn't necessarily mean one of them isn't completely buggered. Okay, cooler time? Yeah. Wow, this is a... Beefy cooler for a 2U. Yeah, the, the nice thing about a 2U is you get double the cooler capacity, which means your fans get to spin a lot slower. Yeah, compared which is going to be good year. for at your house. <laughs> yeah, one U's are like, oh. We're using a similar machine to this at my place, right? Yeah. Okay. Just the so, less cool one. Oh, really? Yeah, so Dream's, Dream's going to have a better server than me. Yeah. I'm feeling pretty inadequate right now. I love these toolless sleds, man. When I built the first NVMe Wanik, it took Frickin' forever, and I didn't even put all the screws in. Oh, these are so much easier to deal with. I can't believe that every one of these is 30 frickin' terabytes. I just installed 60 terabytes of SSD storage. Hold on, here comes number 90. 90, like frickin' what? I mean, we do have more, we can Man, put more. They're dense. Yeah, they're, I was gonna grab one of the CD6s, which are like the not enterprise ones. Um, they are substantially heavier. These things are dense as hell. Here, David, catch. Oh, I didn't know. I don't, I can't. Hold on a I second. No, that. I wanna I wanna open it. What? No. Yeah. No. Yeah, chill. Jesus. Just relax. What's the worst that can happen? I lose the screws and we can't put it back together? Yeah. 
It's what? got a multi PCB design. Oh my god. Of course it does. Oh my god, these caps though. That's gonna be the difference. These are their actual enterprise capacity. They're willing to say it's enterprise. This is for power loss protection. These capacitors ensure that if any data is sitting in a cache or in a DRAM cache, for example, it can be flushed to NAND before the drive actually powers down, even in the event of a sudden power loss to the server. That's freaking cool. And those are <laughs> huge. Look at the little also, thermal pads. Also, they have little thermal pads. Wait, they have cooling for the caps. That's amazing. Wow. I'm so happy right now. That's so much NAND. How much NAND is that NAND? Hold on, we gotta find more NAND. We're going on a we're going on a voyage. Oh, God, oh there's please. a clip. There's a clip here. No. Hold oh on, hold God. on. Oh my, oh my God. God, this is so cool. Oh. I never get a chance to play with stuff like this. Right? God damn it. <gasps> Whoa, there's another layer. Hold on. So they got thermal pads between Oh my god, Jake. I think it's three layers. Jake. No, Jake, stop, Jake. please stop. Hold on. Please, I, please. I god think it's damn it. three I layers. Can't, I can't do this. I think it's three layers. Oh. Hold on, how do we get this layer? My heart. Oh, my there heart. it goes. Holy balls. Look it's that got guy. four DRAM cache dies. What about that controller? That thing is huge. Wow. Hold on, here it goes, here it goes, here it goes. Oh, <gasps> eight. Wait, there's more? Eight DRAM cache <laughs> dies. Well, that's the thing, is the higher capacity you go for your NAND flash, the more DRAM cache you need. And if you're gonna have 30 freaking terabytes of NAND, you're gonna need a lot of DRAM. Eight gigabit, one G by eight. So it's one gig, so it'd be eight gigs, I guess. Eight gigs of flipping RAM. This SSD has as much as most people's gaming machines. There's oh, a new no. update. I brought out the Unify switch. We were kind of originally thinking we might build a whole rack and send it to him, but then apparently his like installers are doing a bunch of crap, so we're just gonna give him the switch. Yeah. Uh, this switch has two 25 gig ports that we're gonna aggregate together to be 50 gig for NVMe server. Totally probably overkill for what he's doing. And then we're gonna do two 10 gigs aggregated together for 20 gig to the hard drives. Then all these other ports are 10 gig to the rest of the house, so that means if for whatever reason they expanded and had like a whole team of editors there, they could have five people concurrently hitting this boy for 50 gigabits a second mm -hmm. and this boy for 20 gigabits a second. That is a lot of throughput for yeah. gameplay. Games. And if you really wanted, you could switch this to a four by 10 card and then you could have 40 gig. Each editor will get its own 10 gig. It's, it's pretty sick. It's a nice little switch. Ah, uh, you were gonna show me something cool. There's a new view. Yeah, hey look, so they added this new port view. So yeah. now, instead of having to edit a port one by one, you can go, yeah. hey, I want to edit that one, that one, that one, that one, and maybe this one over here. Oh, that's cool. And you can set, bam, I only want this. Now, security-minded folks might put MAC address like limits, so only that one MAC address can connect to that port. It's a nice security thing. You can also see what device is connected to a specific port a lot easier, so I can just oh, click on it. So awesome. I plug the BMC into that one port, and then I just, Click on that, there's the IP. Here's a cool feature for Ubiquity. It would be really nice to be able to take this, go, yes, that's the device that I want, and just set a rule that only that MAC address can connect to that port just with one click here. Yeah, if you just go like limit, or yeah. lock, MAC yeah. address lock, that would be cool. I bet they'll do it. They're probably gonna watch this and they're probably gonna do it. Yeah, they might do it. Hey, guess what? It works now. I got a VGA cable because I thought the IPMI was broken. Turns out they screwed up. I love you, what? Gigabyte but they sent a server that doesn't support Milan chips. No, it's a Rome server? It's a Rome server. Do we have any Rome chips to? We do. So we had a oh. 75 or 7402P, which is a 24 core. Still gonna be plenty for this. Yeah, for the like, way cut down drive configuration that we put in here anyway. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's gonna be great. Psh. Okay, so it now we're- It will actually be great. Yeah, we're in TrueNAS now on both of them. We're gonna be using TrueNAS core as much as I like scale. Core is a little more production ready. Yeah. Um, and we want this to just work and him not to have to screw with it. And this is actually shockingly user friendly to use these days. Mm -hmm. Back in the early FreeNAS days, oh boy. you had to kind of be nerdy enough that you could have basically done it yourself in Linux anyway. Now, man, this GUI is so pretty. Okay, Linum TI, which one do you want to start with? I want to start with the one that definitely has a working drive in this slot right here. 
I will admit, there are 60 functioning drives in the server presently. <laughs> I will not admit that I don't think, or that didn't make sense. I will not admit that I don't think. I think that drive will die faster than the other ones. That's nice, but that <laughs> wasn't the bet. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'll buy you lunch, whatever. Yes! Why would you do that? It's fine. It's fine. It Don't probably, touch it yet. It's still spinning. I'm letting it's it. It's still spinning. I'm it's letting it spin. Wiggle wobbling. Barely. I can't believe you bought a petabyte. Of I can't storage. believe you threw that hard drive. Can we just cut back to that for a second? What? Holy crap! I can't believe you did that. Okay. <clears throat> so we want some pretty chonktastic raid Zenus. I'm figuring maybe not 15 drive VDEVs like we do. I was thinking to do 10 drive Z2s. Or, I mean, for like performance, apparently the optimal is six drives, but that's a lot of capacity loss. Yeah, we'd have to do Z1s at that point, and I really don't want to do that. So RAID Z2 is kind of like RAID 6, where you can lose two of your drives before you actually lose any data, but it means that two drives out of whatever the VDEV size you have are lost in terms of capacity. So RAID Z1 sets aside only one of those drives for parity data, but that means you can only sustain one loss before your next loss is gonna cost you data. So for Dream, you're thinking 10? Well, hold on, I just Raid realized Z2? we wanna have some hot spares. Yeah. We don't want 10 well, hot spares. why don't spares. we do this? Why don't we do four hot spares, one for each bank, and then, and nine, then we nine, can nine, do nine. seven drive VDEVs. Up RAID Z2, we're gonna lose a lot of capacity. Uh, why don't we go 14 drive VDEVs then, RAID Z3. So yeah, that okay. would allow three drives lost per one of these rows. Sure. With a spare. Okay, so if we do RAID Z3s, 14 drives, we get 800 terabytes usable. I'm about to blow your mind. How much is each of these drives worth? Uh, like 600. Six, 600? Yeah, it's like 600 bucks. 600 dollars, okay? Let's do some quick math real quick here, okay? 600, 1200, 2400, okay? 5,000, 10,000. $10,000 worth of drives is sitting doing nothing. There will be no data actually stored on them, okay? They're just holding data just in case these ones fail or standing there ready to go in case these fail. 10 grand, that level of redundancy costs in a server like this. Let's call this big data. Big data. We're gonna set it to be uh, an SMB share. We're gonna go into advanced. I'm gonna do Z standard compression because it's really great. Record size of one meg because it's all footage. Bam, and now we can store stuff. Big data. So it works out to be 740 tera tibby bytes usable after formatting. That's some big data. All right, let's do the NVMe. We're gonna do it pretty similar to the petabyte server where we have a hot spare, but we're just doing one and it's a RAID Z2, which means we have two disks of parity protection. I think protection. that is so overkill. It is? I, with a hot spare, Do you want to get a phone call? Okay, Hold on. The problem with SSDs, hear me out, the problem with SSDs, they're not like hard drives where they kind of staggered fail. Usually when you have like 20 SSDs and they're all from the same batch, they'll just start failing at the same time because they're so much more dependent on like write endurance. It's better to be safer. He's got 100 TB bytes. That's so much. That's, that's more than we have. I know, but this is like, 90 terabytes of SSD storage just not being used. Well, it's being used. Jake, I think it's fine. RAID Z1 and a hot spare. I, I, no. They're enterprise drives. He's barely gonna touch these compared to the workloads they're designed for. You're not, you know I'm not I can, wrong. I, I see Wendell like through the camera. He's I'm looking calling at me. Him. You're <laughs> Hey there, Mr. Wilson. It's me, Linus the Menace. How's it going? Well, Jake and I are having a bit of a debate right now. We've got seven of these 30 terabyte Keoxia drives, and I'm not gonna tell you who is in which position so that you're unbiased, <laughs> but there are two potential configurations for them in, in TrueNAS here. Um, are, are you willing to weigh in on, on which one you think is proper? Okay. One of us wants to do a RAID Z2 with a hot spare, and one of us wants to do a RAID Z1 with a hot spare. I would probably do a RAID Z1, honestly. Oh. It's, a little bit more, it's a little bit more dangerous, um, but those drives are so fast, and if you're on top of it, it's probably okay. 
But what if they're not on top of it? If they're not on top of it, then you gotta go raid D2. Do you really think it's likely that we're gonna hit these drives hard enough that we should be concerned about their lifespan? If you got a hot spare on the flank side, I would probably just make it raid D2 instead of having a hot spare. Oh. Only because flash wears differently than mechanical hard drives now. Okay. But so what about want... a raid Z2 and a hot spare? Oh my god, Jake. Okay, all right, let's just go raid Z2 then with seven drives. We need to put some footage on this thing. Nice. It's going through my workstation, so it's not gonna be that fast. Wow, even through your workstation, it's doing 400 plus megabytes a second? You know what? I should go jump onto mine and hit it at the same time and see if that even goes down. I bet it won't. The bottleneck's gonna be your, your station, not this machine. Okay, well, I'm still copying at 400 to 450 megabytes a second. How about you? Okay, you ready for me to press go? Oh, you haven't pressed go yet? JK, I already did. Yeah, that's and what I'm I figured. I'm going at 530, 540 megabytes a second. Yeah, the one thing to consider is because we're copying like a folder full of a bunch of little files, Windows will never really get there because it's like starting, stopping, starting, stopping, starting, stopping. But that's still super awesome. This is really important. Just because we have redundancy, okay, so we have that extra couple of drives that can fail, doesn't mean that we have backup. So if this is where they're gonna store their active projects, then if something were to go wrong, let's say uh, a power supply blew, I mean, theoretically, those are <clears throat> also redundant, so you could, just, you could just yank one in the middle of operation, but let's say it blew in such a catastrophic way that it lit on fire. Okay, this server is dead, but somehow the fire doesn't spread outside the steel chassis and light the other server on fire. We need a backup. That backup is gonna go automatically from this server to this one, unfortunately eating up some of our capacity. But again. not that much, it's gonna be incremental. So but each time it backs up, it's, it's keeping what's already on there and just adding the new stuff. Yes. And it will cycle automatically. So we can set it so it keeps like a daily backup. Uh, for two weeks and it automatically deletes the old ones when it makes the new ones and doesn't store a bunch on here. It's and then as cool. soon as they delete something from here, that will eventually fade out of those daily or weekly backups until the only copy that exists is the archival copy, which like us, Dream has said, is not super essential. It's a nice to have, not a need to have, because you can always go re-download it off of YouTube if it comes to that. That's your off-site backup, essentially. Thanks, YouTube. Okay, I started the backup. It's backing up from this server over to this server, and it's running at 400 megabytes a second. I mean, that's a lot of data. <laughs> you could probably get it to go faster by disabling like secure ciphers on SSH, but right now we just have it in the default configuration just to show that it works. And since by default this is only gonna be a daily backup, it's got 24 hours to move whatever's on here. That's plenty enough. If you guys enjoyed this video, check out Kyoxia's products. They've got everything from enterprise to consumer grade SSD products. We're gonna have them linked down below. Also, major shout out to Gigabyte who sent over the wrong server, but they did send a server, so kudos for that. Micron for sending over the RAM, AMD for providing the CPU that we couldn't use, thanks Gigabyte. Um, and also 45 drives for sending over this epic Storinator that happens to color match the green tabs on oh, here. Oh wow. And with the dream front plate. They can do like literally anything custom you want. Yeah, it looks amazing. If you guys enjoyed this video, go check out, uh, I don't know, one of the other times Jake and I worked on a server thing. He'll find something. Petabyte of flash. Yeah. Oh yeah, we need to get that going. We gotta finish that. But Jake is too busy helping me with my house. He moved in early. He's an in-demand kind of boy. Yeah.